Okay, I'm very nervous. <laughs> Lads, lassies, welcome back to the YouTube. So today we're doing a completely different video. As you know, I'm a wakeboarder. This is Owen McCarthy. He is the owner here at Bally Haas, runs the show, has changed wakeboarding in Ireland. And I thought it'd be fun to do like a little bit of a podcast style video where we just have a chat, talk about wakeboarding, business, running a cable park, everything about it. And uh, yeah, so it's probably gonna be a longer one. So I'd suggest maybe just sitting back, plugging in the headphones if you're going on a drive and listening to that. We were saying also probably going to go business-esque or, or well, well, I don't know, I, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I'd imagine business-esque, looking from an Irish point of view out as well, I think yeah. is, is a lot of where my stuff is going to go, but yeah. I think it'll be interesting. Okay, sweet. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, okay, Owen started, I met you probably five years ago. Um, just it's literally out. the day the park opened. Yeah, you came out of nowhere, you were running on generators, yeah, 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 yeah. Why did you open a waypoint? Um, we're coming, well, like, it wasn't, to be honest, it was nothing to do with the sport, per se, like, we, like, sure, you, you, like, we were having a conversation there recently about, oh, like, you just kind of came out of nowhere, no one knew who you were, and, like, yeah. that was literally what it was, but we did it from, um, it was very a business orientated decision. We'd been doing school tours. We had an activity center, as you know, there already. Yeah. And the activity center was like getting big groups in. That's where we were making our market. The groups were having a great time. The site itself was class. Like, you know what I mean? In terms of people could come on site, they're doing a load of, a load of activities at once. They love that. And then they were coming back in ones and twos, like, or they, like say a kid came on a school tour and they were coming back going, oh, mom, dad, let, let, let's come down to Ballyhas, it's class, like, you know, and then, then, then they come up and they'd be, um, oh, what can we do? And we're like, oh, nothing, everything's set up for like 12 people Big, plus, yeah, you know, yeah. that kind of way. So it was actually a couple of Irish lads approached us, us first day, like to be, like to, to, so they approached us and they were like, oh, look, we're looking for a lake. And that, that is the biggest challenge about a wake park is getting your water, getting, yeah. getting access to yeah. the water. Like, and they approached us and they kind of like, they had limited enough budget at the time and they wanted to like put in a cable. Um, and they came out like, like fair play to them. Like they had their business plans in place. We weren't the first people they came to, but they had came and we sat down there and they wanted to put in one line and run it. And like, we pay them a fee or something or that kind of, that kind of way. To, yeah. That was where the, the kind of it fell down a little bit. Is that like it was? It would have been very well. First of all, we didn't want to give up part of our site to another the lake operator, like, and the lake exactly. exactly. Like we know exactly, exactly the biggest asset. So they came and they were, they were okay. Like uh, you know, we want to set up a way for really passionate guys, um, and then we like it didn't work out in, in that sense because it just wasn't going to work. Like we couldn't factor in that kind of pricing into our school tour price, for instance, to get them on. Yeah. And with one cable was the other big thing, which is which is an unusual one now. Like obviously, as a wake park, you see a lot of people coming down. I want to set up a wake park and this kind of stuff. Do you reckon two cables is the answer? I actually, I, I don't personally. I wouldn't. If I'm well, personally, look. If I if I could only have a wake park and it was one line, I would take it. But if I had to set one up and I could only just do the one, I, I'd be I'd be sketchy about it. Like you know, in, in, and you got to remember where we are in Ireland is like super rural. Like we're not, Literally like, we're in the not. Of yeah, we're not. Like we, we've got a couple of population centers, but we have an hour away. We've got Cork, that's three fifty thousand yeah. people. Limerick. You know, two. You need stuff, but there's not like there's not 150 kids living there. No, there. and it, like in one sense, it would have been so if if we were putting just the weight park in here, that's risky. But like yeah. remember, we were building on a previous business, like you know what I mean. So um, then the weight park said so. Like what we did know was that we'd be able to give a quality first experience, and that was what we were all about in yeah. terms of a quality experience for those one and two people coming through. Other than that, like we didn't really overthink it, you know what I mean? Like we, we, we definitely had what we were looking for in terms of oh, get get a model together. Um, like it, the, we had a, a big thing about 90, 90 minutes for 12 people, like on one activity. That was a big kind of thing we were doing. And we're like, Tim's looking at us over there and we're doing, but he, he's like laughing because we're like, for the first year ever, we might change that this year. Like, so it was our golden rule. And if you, have, if you have two cables, you can just about get six people on either cable. So 12 people through in an hour and a half. So we're like, okay, it should work. Yeah. They could go wakeboarding technically and go ziplining after and they'd still work with the, the same models we're selling. Yeah. Um, 
So I kind of that's that's how it kind of came about, really. Like you know. And um, then obviously I know, it, but it's like nearly the backbone of the community around the place. Well, the is it, yeah. Yeah. Well, like well, like like off, like it's it's the core of what we do. Um, in terms of yeah, it's the core. Like it's it's such a community driven. Like and then the, the staff love it. Like from an activity centre point of view, you can't really do it anywhere else. Um, in like Wake Dock would probably be the closest we have, and like Cable of Wake up in Belfast now as well. Like they're adding more and more. Yeah. That's coming more similar to us. So it's interesting that they're well, they're the, the Wake Dock probably started similarly adding the cable onto an existing activity yeah, business. Really. Uh, cable and Wake are probably the opposite. The opposite. They you know kind of started with the cable and, and now are adding activities. Like well, they've got obviously a bigger project going on there. Um, what you see, I guess, like. People coming looking looking into the business now is kind of going. The aqua parks are key as well. Like you know, they've they yeah, added. Yeah, <laughs> they have. They have. They've added. Like we were in a. I was in a, a sales meeting there at the start of the year, or a, a new stock meeting, a, a new product meeting, and there must have been ten system two parks in there, and it was like, oh, who 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 here has an aqua park? Every single hand. Yeah. Like it's, it's key. It's key. Yeah. Key from a revenue and the ATM. <laughs> The money tree, yeah. um, not that like not the easiest of money trees either, but it yeah. definitely look it, it helps. But again, that was a weird one for us because we'd already had we already had revenue streams like and like anybody saying this if you're if you're building a business you need to have multiple revenue streams. So that's yeah. where we're growing up. But back to the community point of view, yeah, from here it's awesome. Like and then if you're ever thinking of like you know it's an easy decision to try and put in a wake park and, and an aqua park and you have a limited amount of funds to do it all to put in an aqua park. Then it's very hard to go back and put in your wake park because it's such a big investment and, and you don't see that community vibe yeah, out of it, like you know. Um, um, because it's interesting for me because wake wearing was like at the time I didn't even realise it like five years ago when it was dying in Ireland, right. like in the world really, like on the boat. It's, it's obviously maybe that's a controversial thing, but it's not the boat wake wearing is not as successful, let's say on a growing level as the cable, not even nearly. Well, like, is, like, that's my question to, was going to be to you now, like, I've heard, you know, like, I think Ireland is a little bit of a unusual one at the moment, we're a small, little, passionate, growing community, but I don't think, is, is cable going through a bit of a dip in there, have you seen that in Europe and that kind of stuff? That no, I'd say cable's stronger than ever, boat, reckon, boat is going through well, massive, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's very interesting because board sales are up roughly four or five percent, Boat sales are up, it's outrageous. Like I think in the market, it's like over a hundred percent increase in boat sales. Like it's all the boat companies are at full capacity, but it's all going to wake surfing. And probably Southern Hemisphere as well, is it? A lot, a lot of Southern Hemisphere and a lot of the Americans just ridiculous. In America, like in places like Florida, people buy a house and they buy a boat. It's part of like, they literally take it into consideration when they get a mortgage, like it's crazy. But they are getting financing on it and it's financing it. And that's the thing, I actually spoke to a boat dealer in Ireland and he said his problem is, he doesn't have finance yeah. boat. So if you want to buy a boat, you actually need 150 grand, which is That's just such a barrier to entry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so and then I kind of think like, when you came in and there's like a, why, like the grassroots stuff instead of, because everywhere just wants to run like this sick pro contest, but then you guys are really good. Well, at like it, to be fair, to be fair to the guys at Industry Wake Parks, like it was, it was a turnkey solution that they were selling, like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like they're, and they're still doing it. They're business saying, plan. Yeah, totally. Like, they literally supply business plans, supply everything, like to an extent that we didn't quite need it at the time, yeah. you know what I mean? Because we were fitting it into a different model. So I suppose we surprised them as well. Like I think we made initial contact in September, signed the contracts in November and was installed in February. Like, you know, and yeah, it all happened fast. that quickly, like, you know. Um, yeah, it'd be very unusual for them. Yeah. But like, again, to be fair to them, like turnkey solution, full package, which they're still doing, is like go to them they, they, if you have your land and you, you have your planning and all that kind of stuff you know they'll come they'll, they'll, they'll put in the systems they'll train up your staff and then at the time they'll be doing the grassroots tour as well so they'd literally come and supply a judge and run the whole car like i remember our first grassroots tour oh look thinking back at it thinking, yeah, thinking back at it we were like we didn't know what we were doing. We just rocked up that morning, yeah. going so like, how does this work? Kind of thing. Like, I don't know who was it. Was it Dave Knight or was it? I think he was the first person. Yeah, maybe or Toby, 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 Toby. Maybe, maybe like uh, I don't know, but anyway, like I think you were even given briefings, and sure we didn't even know how to think. I've never been to a kettle contest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember that. Like, actually, it's so funny. I can maybe insert the clip of the video if I can find it. But there's like, it's, <laughs> it's an edit that came out of Bally House, and it was so sick, and they're all so happy. And editing wise, it was amazing. But then like the, 
everyone was just leaving at the beginning. Of the there were so many near deaths in. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. Was, like, well, the that, that wasn't the, the, the comp, no, that was just a little club thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, yeah. that was like, we've come from such sketchy beginnings. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you only see it when you look back and it's yeah, cringeworthy yeah. and that kind of stuff. It's crazy. Um, but like, it's funny, it's funny that I suppose, again, we were learning on the job, like industry, did the best job ever of giving a turnkey solution. But like, I, myself and Taryn, one of the lads there that were coaching the first year, you know, there was there was members coming through and they were they were like learning tantrums and stuff. We hadn't landed a tantrum, like you know, yeah. I still haven't landed a tantrum. But, <laughs> like, but, but like we were, we, were yeah, but we were literally, uh, we were literally like coaching someone. They try and go learn this. And we're like, oh yeah, yeah, cool. Like just hold off it for a while, do something else. Yeah. Then we'd run down after work and go, okay, let's at least attempt it. So we have some idea what to what to do. Like so, in that kind of sense, lo- I think luckily, and um, when you look back at it, um, I think I know I've been to like tons and tons of parks between systems and full size since like that you're looking back a rural wake park is a funny one like it, everything tells you at the start that you're like okay you've no footfall you've got no populations yeah. that you should really you know you should be kind of worried like but then you get it you get it, like more people get an opportunity to spend more time on the water initially and then all of a sudden this community is created yes. um, and that's what we had and so like that's why we were under pressure because these guys were learning quickly and getting time on the water and then we had to go down and up our coaching and, and in the end we were invested in coaching and getting the pro guys back over to do clinics with our staff yeah. and we understood kind of inherently at the start as well that like there was no wakeboarders around here, like so we we have to train everybody up from the very start. So yeah. our initial kind of things were like just do an awesome beginner session, just make sure people come off the water with a smile. Like if we can do that, yeah, and make sure that we're available and open when people want to do and have very like nine to five hours or whatever the hours were, that we'd be there regardless of whether there's somebody on there. That they were the commitments we made. And I think that was laying the foundation of, of a community unknown to ourselves, you yeah. know what I mean? And it kind of it kind of sprouted from there. And then it's you being into it though as well and all the staff like yeah well like like the yeah. best riders here like, yeah well I, I, i'm in, like i don't get me wrong i love wakeboarding but i'm into the business like that's what i'm committed to so like i just saw wakeboarding. Do you reckon if you didn't like it would you have kept it going this long because it's oh I thought, yeah from a business point of view i don't know how much like like the commitment part about these days is the community side of it like although they, they take care of themselves now because they're such a big one um but it's, it's making sure that you they have interests and targets like competitions and 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 coaching nights and just just yeah. stuff to keep you yeah, yeah all that kind of stuff but again as i said it's, it's great because it's got to a point where it's like i'm doing less and less coaching which i've got it about I actually probably the coaching i enjoy more yeah. than ever i think i think because you, they just go down and come up with a smile on their face yeah. and the progression levels it's so fast. easy on the system it's as well, so it? easy like you know what i mean they learn something new every time and yeah. you just come up buzzing and you can't help to be get behind that I think like yeah. you know what I mean yeah. but you see so like you're obviously saying cable is 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 progressing but like I just see that across the whole sport so where like what's going wrong like from your point of view you're, you're, you're a boat rider yeah. which is you still classify yourself as a boat rider uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right now it's, yeah. <laughs> it's up in the air but yeah. Yeah, yeah you were out there in eight degrees <laughs> yeah, and this, know, like, yeah. this isn't for yeah, sure it was miserable <laughs> no filming it was just literally me and Alan just having a session yeah. um, but where, see, it's a weird one because the top level is still progressing. Obviously, we saw like Steel Athlete try and triple flips. There's like so many guys now where, like, if you pick like the top bow riders, like Mike Dowdy, Tony Iacoli, Harley, Nick Rappa, they're all going to the gym, like progressing their fitness levels because it's the only way you can go from the being. There's a lot of, yeah, we spoke about this. There's a lot of people. There's probably, I'm going to say, like 20 to 30 people at, like, what well, I'm going to say, my level, which is top. I'm going to say, like, maybe getting to. 8th position or whatever or maybe 10th position mm-hmm. but then those top like 8 to 10 guys are in their own level it's because that's all they can do like they can't even most of them don't ride cable like have you ever seen Harley on a cable like you can yeah. pop a double flip but like well you like I'm going to rewind there so you were saying progressing the sport into triples like mm-hmm. is that progressing the sport like I mean like for me again and this is why I kind of started the video like you know we're looking from obviously purely cable yeah purely like the top level is you in the country by a long while. Who's pushing? Like Connor's probably pushing. Podge, you know, Podge, Podge, like Podge and the guys coming up from here. Yeah. But like they're new to it. Like so, I mean, like for me, that top range. And I understand what you're saying. I see those guys in the gym, and like 
it actually looks amazing. Yeah, like, find it. It does, <laughs> I would love to find a gym like yeah. that. So if anyone wants to start up a gym, yeah. I would be the first member in there. Um, so I could understand, but like, are they progressing the sport in the right way? Like, you know, for me, the boat riding, like, like, you, like you, we've got that Wake Ireland group, and yeah, like, it's you, every, hopping. Yeah, but every time you do your Facebook page just to put that, in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the Facebook page is hopping. Every yeah, time. yeah, yeah, just with edits and stuff. Yeah. But the boat edit comes up, and it's like you know, there's six variations of doubles, and, uh, like, and then and then just huge technical spins. Have you and seen like, the Argentinian boys ones, Ulf and Kai? They're the, I can't remember their second name. These two Argentinian, yeah. I think they're twins, identical twins. I'm pretty sure. They're like 16, 17. They're cable riders. They own, their family owns Pampa Cable. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I know. I know Pampa, they're yeah. unbelievable on the boat, too. And uh, they actually just uploaded yesterday, two days ago, a boat yeah. edit, and it's insane. They've put, it's Star, wait till you see that. Well, it was, yeah, that's, that's, what, uh, that's my they're question. Like. Doing the doubles, they're doing the tens, they have a back line in there. I don't know who's who in it. Yeah. It's quite confusing, <laughs> yeah. actually. But they're also doing like everything else from like, the, they've got all the Star stuff and it's pushing it. But it kind of goes into everything has its place like you need someone like steel try and triples in my opinion to that's he's an important element in there to be pushing the sport in that way like yeah. it has to happen but then at the same time you also need like people like me doing the social media stuff people doing the star stuff doing the photos everything like that i think it needs a kind of mixed variation yeah, I think there's an in interesting place. statistic here where in america anyway in weight order participation numbers in adams has been steady around the three million mark for seven years but over the course of the last 10 years, the under 18 participation has been falling off a cliff, going from like really? 1.5 in 2006 to, that's 1.5 million to 740,000. So it's literally half really? in the space of America. I'm going to put that down to the economy, like 2006, because then 2007, the crash, yeah. boats. Because in America, the, the well, 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 why would it, why cable's would it? tiny in America. Cable has like, there's more yeah, cable but, parts in Germany but, but, alone than in the whole of the United States. But that's not the so you think the participation comes from the cable? For like so why would why would why would the adults stay at three million and the and the kids go fall off like you know you think it's the other way because young people, people people they're like I don't know, I think Jay if I look at my friends, most of my friends have like more disposable income in their late twenties, like early yeah, 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 so they do just go out and whiteboard and stuff to yeah. spend that money. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, well I well maybe I also that's an interesting figure because, really I was, well, well, yeah. because well, the other thing was I was probably the question was like we're we well it, it's the underage I think I was getting at, getting to like it, I find it hard sometimes to promote to the underage now for us again it's a location where, where they could, like it, the parents have to drive them out for half an hour and go again like so we have yeah. to run so it was hard we got to call some yeah can't just walk up there. yeah exactly like you know so. It's like you as a pro and as I've grown up there, like what would you say to, to parents to get their kids into the sport? And like, why, why would you sell it like when your whole life has been essentially it? Like, you know what I mean? Um, in terms of growing up weight boy. Yeah, like, I don't know, it's, it's, like, it's I think it's funny actually, they said this, he might even watch this, I'm like, I call down this, but I once coached this really rich Arab guy a bunch of years ago in Dubai. And um, he told me that weight boy is really important because it checks your ego and stuff. So basically, like he's like in here in Dubai, everyone has loads of money, everyone has fancy cars, big houses, but you can't buy being good at wakeboarding. It, it, that's what I think for kids, it will teach you the, oh, I fell, I'm gonna go yeah, again, yeah, oh, yeah. I fell, I'm gonna go again. And it kind of teaches you like, I don't know if resilience is probably a bit strong of a word, but it teaches you like progress, and it teaches you actually how to do it like that. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to just, so that's, it, it's more of a life lesson than a, it kind of like, it's a strategy that it teaches you nearly more yeah. than anything. As well as it's just a sport, it's active, it's everything else. And those well, are from a competitive things. nature or just a general? Even from a, think about it, if you're out there like today yeah. and you, like when you fell, like you yeah. just go back up, you try it again. Like, and it's just a given thing. It's the same with skateboarding, snowboarding. It's like what you do, it's, it's expected. Like you don't even, I like that. you know like, what I mean? Whereas yeah, from, yeah. compared to let's say like football or like soccer or whatever you call it, it's mm -hmm. like, do you know what I mean? That there, just you just run up and down. You try to score a goal. You win some. You lose some. Well, it was very like I think it's great for the the kind of again if we just talk under 18s, the guys who are not into the team sports and stuff. They I find they definitely on all our kind of activities they yeah. seem to thrive on it and because it's they have got a sense of camaraderie the same way you would have in a team sport. But the fact that you also on your own yeah you, know, you have to do it yourself and fall yeah. and get you up. can't rely on someone else. Yeah. So you can't, like on a team like I remember playing rugby when I was younger like. You could just kind of be invisible if you want it. Like you can kind of nearly like I remember playing matches. 
Actually, I hope can he's good. Play rugby I know, yeah, it doesn't seem like it. I'm too small. But, um, no, I actually fully remember in the hockey match touching the ball like twice in the whole game. Like, yeah. I just kind of kept it. Because I'm lucky. I, 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 I wish I never I wish I didn't have that story to tell, but unfortunately, yeah. I do. Um, but yeah, like, it's just mad. Like, it's, it's quite. Uh, well, that's like, I suppose, back to statistic, and it's, it's a that's a worrying trend in the states. But as you say, maybe, maybe, hopefully, if we've already identified that it's growing in cable, and yeah. there's very little cables in the states. Very, very little, yeah. And they don't really, because America, everything's bigger is better, and they don't really do system twos. Like, there's very, I don't know of any system two. That's weird. And then you private ones. Yeah, and you look at the then somewhere. I think it's Lithuania has like twenty or so. Many, or I was system in Latvia as well. Latvia, well. Latvia, Latvia is in Riga, and it's a small city. I think the population is less than a million, and there was like. I think there were six different system two parks. I can say, and then obviously making money. I get. I don't know. Um, well, like, I sorry, we're kind of hopping to and no, fro. But fine. go back to the go back to the style and the progression of the sport. There, you said there's a place for everyone. And where do you think your your kind of style? Like, I know you you said you're, there's a place for me because from a social so, media, yeah. and I obviously agree with that. But from just talk your writing there, from a point of view, it's so, all. I guess where our conversation the last time stemmed from is I was asking you like, like what would it take like what what would it take you to, to, to break into that to go would, to would you say you're, are you top twenty do you reckon I, on the boat on the cable now yeah you know we're talking boat, boat here now think, boat. yeah I think I I reckon so I it's it, our competition is an interesting thing because I'm ex- like well, fortunately I mean, like there is no reason for this other than good genetics I'm good with dealing with pressure. And I rarely fall in yeah, contest. Yeah, yeah. And I'm able, I'm, and that's why I'd be a better wakeboarder than I probably actually am. So if we're to just take trick for trick, like I'm in top twenty, just maybe. Just. But if you put me down to it on the day, there's a lot of like even big names who have like I've beaten a lot of big people out of heats and stuff. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's. So talk to us about that. Like I know they're in the gym. Like so, say okay tomorrow we're starting. Like what's it going to take to get you up to? To Hardy and and and, and Corey and these boys. Big like, set of balls. No. <laughs> it went, like, it's, it's I went like, well, like. I ha- the problem is I have to drop so much stuff. So like number one is probably couldn't make videos anymore because it's a well. What, what, how do you know those boys finance it? Finance it. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, it's sad, but like unfortunately a lot of the progression and when they kind of get to it is in their teens and their parents are funding them. And and that's kind of the sad thing about wakeboarding is. It's obviously not it's essential, and there's a lot of people who have, who have broken this trend. Like there's a lot of riders, but for the most part, like if your parents are like middle class or middle upper class, you have a better chance. Like if you have a like all these guys have brand new boats and stuff which are 150 grand. Like that's do you know what I mean? Like that's, obviously yeah. now well, the top a, guys there's, are a, there's a clear big. financial barrier, and isn't there something? And that's the problem with the boat, in my opinion. And isn't there wasn't there a big thing about sport? Is that like you know probably the best athletes are playing at the top level of soccer because everyone can do it whereas these niche sports you, the best athletes can't get to the top yeah. because they might not have the funds. It's expensive. Like, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I remember I took it on a whim to try and get to that top level and then there's two sides of it. There's like, I don't want to use the word corruption but there's like the click political. and there's the political side of stuff and then there's the the actual skill. And so let's say when I was 19 I like made the like the delve into going to the States. I like packed up everything here, sold my car, took out any little bits of money I had, and I went over to America, rented a place. That was our first, that was about five years ago. It was yeah, like so around first, the first I year. Think, I think I came back maybe, I went over in like September, and I by, I think, yeah, that would have yeah. been in September, you would have, yeah. And anyway, I went over, like trained really hard, and at this stage I was, like this stage doubles weren't happening in the boat on the regular, like there was no one, I think at this, maybe five people had done 1080s, like I was right up there. I'd come fourth in two World Cup stops, like I was right, right up there. And I went to go do the Pro Tour, like that was my plan, because yeah. that's what you're told, like when I grew up, that was the system. So I went. Yeah, and we do, you were told by who? Just the system, like yeah, it's kind of like, even not like, my sponsors would have never been like, this is what you, sh- you need to do, but they were saying like, this is the best way to progress, to get yourself to the top. Yeah. And I went there and then I basically did all the system, I did the Pro Tour qualifier, I came second and my friend Sam Karn came first and neither of us got invited to Pro Tour and it said like top eight people would get on it but they, they just didn't invite us and it was like for no reason at all but then people who, I think one of the guys who came 18 got on it. sucks as a sport, isn't it? That's, yeah. that, that's it, that. And I, like again, I don't know like, the stories or anything but from an outside point of view you're like yeah. How, how is the sport supposed to progress when they're when they're there's no kind of clear like if you look at basketball or American football or yeah. anything like even soccer there's like a clear chain like if yeah. I can do this I'll get to there but in wakeboarding that's not really there it's the same even with the cable stuff like 
the one thing they do in the kind of the plastic playgrounds do is they have a public voting, which I think is very cool. Like that yeah. gives someone else an opportunity. Yeah. But generally speaking, it's normally like just whoever is in and whoever knows the other person. Like if you know the owner, you'll get in type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's maybe not the best. But that's just Wakeboard. We don't. It's not the infrastructure is not there. And do you think it can grow? Like I mean, like it, it's interesting. When we were in Hypnotics there the other week, like, there was a couple, that French crew were there, I hadn't heard of them before, but yeah, they were doing really some good. like insane stuff, like you know what yeah. I mean? So there, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a wonder where the, the motivation comes from on their end, but I suppose, were, were they sponsored, do we know? I'm going to say small time, I'm going to say maybe like a free board type thing, yeah, like, yeah. Like do you think if the wave were ever made the Olympics, it would force a change in the mentality, well, it would just would. open it up so much like that to be forced to, Change that kind of in-house kind of clip. Uh, it'll happen if that happens. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that's a whole question itself. Yeah. I don't personally think it's going to happen. I also don't think it should. I hope it doesn't. From because it ruins snowboarding. Like yeah. it ruins snowboarding. Really? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I don't know the specifics and I don't know a lot about snowboarding, but I know that it has caused so much drama with yeah. brands and everything like that. That it probably is for the best if it doesn't happen. However, if it does happen then all of a sudden at the moment the WWA is the leading kind well, of Well actually I, I, had, I did some notes before this and one was like WWA it's versus WWA like, versus IWA yeah, yeah, yeah. and right now in terms of legitimacy WWA is the main kind of it's the it's the mecca let's say. Yeah. And but, that's both boat and cable isn't it? Boat and cable yeah, yeah. but particularly boat I'd say yeah. It's gonna change if it gets into the Olympics because yeah. the IWSF or WWF or whatever it's called is associated with the Olympic Committee or whatever. Um, and if that happens, then what's gonna happen is for people like you, it's gonna be unreal because all of a sudden, like the Irish County Council, are gonna dig your leg bigger and make a full game. Like maybe not SM. You do that anyway. You don't have to <laughs> yeah, yeah. do it. But no, there's funding all of a sudden. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so of course. It, it opens. Well, that that's a it's doors. a game changer for any sport, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's yeah. That that that's a big one. Like you know. But it comes, it's not all rainbows and butterflies if yeah. that happens. There's going to be drawbacks to it. It's going to probably hurt some, let's say, some businesses, some brands. Well, like, it's an interesting one. So if, we, if we're talking those two organizations from a sport progression, as it seems to be kind of going, like, I think, well, I, I suppose the rules and from what I've seen from the WWE, but it's their coverage that's just better. Like, they're, they're promoting it's, it's it better. So but it's so bad. But like, but if you compare the two, like, yeah, I mean, you like, know what well, I mean? Yeah, like, and then yeah. like, so like talking to you, who's like, just basically covers his life and then like your job essentially at the moment, your, your niche or within the industry is bringing this social media, this yeah. blogger style to it. Like, surely that's the future, no? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what's going to happen. If you look at like the fitness industry, if you even look at BMXing, it's probably the biggest so. All the top BMXers or biggest BMXers from like 10 years ago now, like previous X Games gold medalists and stuff, are now vlogging, like all of them. And yeah. it's, it's because, it's how you commercialise it, because at the end of the day, and this is something that very few athletes really understand, and I don't think fans or followers, let's say, should know this, but at the end of the day, your job as a professional athlete is to sell stuff. Yeah, Whatever of course. Whiteboards, life jackets. T-shirts, whatever it might well, be. Well, I, I think people don't understand that about sponsorships. Uh, you a lot know, of stuff. Yeah, well, it, it's like it, it's it's nothing for free. Like you have to be do it's a contract. Exactly. So it's like if you want to be sponsored, you've got to sell yourself and what you're going to do. It's a yeah. partnership. One has to benefit the other. Completely. And I suppose that's that's. And if you're just really good, it's not going to sell stuff. Like you really have to, particularly in this day and age, like when you're talking like to a camera and stuff like that, it really puts your personality out there. But people feel like they know you, they trust yeah. you. Like if I recommend something, the person buying it, like any of my followers genuinely know that I'm yeah, being serious yeah. and they can probably rewrite through it if I'm selling something. Like if I came on here and I like started selling hair gel, this actually happened, hair gel company came on to me, yeah. wanted to pay me decent money and I was like, I literally haven't wore, worn hair gel since I was 16. Like, <laughs> I can't. Like, but do you know what I mean? Everyone would see right through it and they'd know yeah. I'm not being authentic. And that's the thing about sponsorship is you build trust in someone and you take their information and then like therefore like what I sell sells way more than probably Harley Clifford. But like yeah. no. Well, well, that, well, that's that, that was my my next thing. You must be a sponsorship golden boy at the moment, are you? Like you're racking up the views. Like that that is like it's, it's quite new to the industry it's, it's, and it's, it's, you're, you're hitting but it's, it's you're, yeah, getting, but you're it's, getting a bit of stick from that like, oh, oh I get so much stick from but I actually don't care because the thing is like they're putting all the effort in in the gym in the wakeboard and they wakeboard way more than me I don't yeah. wakeboard as much as like I don't wakeboard as much as anyone would think basically nearly all my wakeboarding is on is on video yeah. which people will be surprised to know but it's true so I just find like my energy is better put into making 
and this is also from maybe a selfish point of view of making videos and everything because when I lived in America, I hated living there, so I was like, right, I need to sort out something so I can live in Ireland and like travel more. And like traveling so much more fun than just being in Orlando. So I was like, right, I need to figure out something. So I started doing the videos and stuff, and it just opened doors. But it, the, the video thing, it just, it works. Like, you know, it sells product. Like, my board, that's the first time that ever happened where someone came on and like just put out this like demand from the crowd came on, got the board, and the board did really well. So like, from a, that, that point of view, I've kind of lost topic to be honest. Well, but yeah, we were, we, were, we were using, I suppose, we were talking about like WWF and WWE. Yeah. And, but like, that's it. Yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. back to the videos and how they're promoting. Yes, yeah, so the promotion. Have you seen like the winning Pro Tour runs? It's like, oh, we did this, that stuff recording for two seconds. I think they're no good. Yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but have you seen like the, the WWE stuff? The winning run, like, let's say from a Pro Tour stop, goes on Facebook and it gets like 2,000 views, or maybe 3,000 views, and maybe it gets 15,000 on Instagram, but that's like nothing. And, but then those boys are raking in like 10 grand a stop or something, aren't they? More, 15, I think it's 15 grand the first time. Yeah. It doesn't make sense, and I know they're probably but, but like, you can't watch that anywhere. Like, you know, I would have it, obviously, I try to keep up with it, the wakeboarding, yeah. like, oh, again, obviously more cable or not, I would watch that if I was at home and I could see it, yeah. and you just can't get access to no, it. No, it comes up like, know. yeah, it, like, it happens on a Saturday, it's, it's the small clip of the winning run is published on Wednesday, and that's it. Yeah, there's nothing. They need some sort of live stream. To be fair, but it's hard on the boat. Hard on the boat, though. As well, how do you do it? Like, can you? Can They've you, done it on Facebook and IWF. Yeah. They did it on someone's phone, and it's like it just looks <laughs> it's cheap. Better, I know, but better than nothing. Maybe. But it's better than nothing, exactly. Yeah. But even it's not that hard. If you look at uh, plastic playgrounds, I'm a massive fan of it. Like plastic playgrounds, the way they've done it. They literally have Dave A V on a drone, live streaming, and then That's they have the John driving and some other guy yeah. commentating. It's so basic, it costs them like three flights. If you knew how much these pro tour stops cost yeah. to put on, like they can afford. You see the one did European stops in the BC. I've seen yeah. figures from like even just what, like whatever big competition. Hundreds of thousands for people who don't know at home. Like mm. It's insane. And they just don't bother to spend an extra five grand to put it out there and actually have a show. And it, that's a waste, I think. It's it's like again, it kind of it kind of hurts again in terms of uh, just the whole progression of the sport. Like you know yeah. what I mean? And it, it's just weird. It's it's it's. Uh, I guess like we're always fighting it here from a business point of view. Like we're private in in uh, say just call it the outdoor industry, and there's a lot of public centers and stuff that can undercut us and that kind of stuff because they're just funded grants, grants and that kind of stuff. Like you yeah. know, so we're always kind of struggling, but. It, so you keep an eye on how the wakeboarding is progressing. It seems to have that kind of vibe. There's no kind of push and that kind of stuff. So again, yeah. going back to Tim's figures, I suppose, it's, it's worrying as a, as a, as a whole. But it is, but then that's what we need. I think what will change you more than getting in the Olympics, more than anything, is eyeballs in the sport. Because yeah. the more eyeballs in the sport, the more people will actually take up the sport, the more the whole thing will grow. Yeah. So, I don't know, if I think if they were to invest any money in these pro tour stops, it would be to put it out there publicly so everyone can see. And it's actually something, to be honest, I've thought about doing, like approaching them and being like, if I, if you were to send me the footage, raw footage, every Saturday night when you finish that, on Sunday I'd film like commentating it and I had like the platform to put it out there. And I, it's, I've thought about doing that before because they need something, like even that would be If anyone's enough. watching, that's, a, that's an official pitch. If you're watching yeah. <laughs> Get in touch. <laughs> it's not free though. <laughs> you shafted me once, and now I'm shafting you. <laughs> that's a story we want to hear. No, no, no. That's just what I couldn't get into. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, not shafting. But yeah, but they need something, whether it's me or someone else. Or they need to put it out there and they need to build. Well, like it going, I suppose, that kind of goes nicely to your, your Red Bull stuff. Like the Red yeah. Bull stuff, that, that, but the professional But that's, a, that but like, that's a, a whole product. There's like, 23 live cameras like it's a whole production yeah that's and that's red bull picked a sport that's like a bit quirky and a bit different and they can put anywhere yeah. nearly anywhere and they've done that and, yeah. and they've done it really well and when you watch that but it's very interesting the whole like kind of but surely that's a good comparison to make like say the cliff jump cliff, cliff diving to, towards a neat another niche sport like and yeah so there is a way that like well we could say a private company you know, have to be like, it's too boring watching your else rails i'm sorry Rails are so sick, but they're Spoken boring. like the true bull rider. No, but they're boring. <laughs> and boat is also boring. Going up and down, five tricks up, five tricks back. I think they cut it down to four tricks to make it like work better and no falls. Yeah. What you need, and I'm sorry, but this is the answer, is a mega ramp. Nothing else. I think everything, and then you have a mega ramp, because that's all cliff diving is, it's one thing. 
and you go True. do you know what I mean and when and it like the be, Munich mash type of type Munich yeah. mash and I think they should just pull you down and then you have to walk back and they get you get whatever three hits and they need to put a ho- like the whole thing needs a new format because it's just so boring boat and cable it's just so what about like that that seems extreme now to me like what about like the, if, they the, wanna, if they want to grow it that's how they what about the fee- I think the fees model is actually quite yeah. good like within an action sport festival which would Munich mash was Munich like mash is well, it's very um, good, yeah. But like, I mean, that's city centre, like built like enormous rails, doing wall rides on the buildings and stuff. Like, yeah. you, you still don't think that's enough to, to push it? It is. But you, well, you need like, like I said, mega ramp, but like you need one key feature yeah. that everything. Because the problem with Munich Mash when you're there watching it is not your average punter doesn't really know what's going on. Like yeah. they know what's going on. We don't know what's going on in diving either, though. That that must be like they're doing a dive and they're put an extra. True. True. You learn it fast. You'd be surprised. Like I had no clue when I first met. Now I literally like oh, that's about that's about an eight point five. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah it's so so yeah. intuitive actually. But um, it, yeah, I don't know. I think there needs to be something that makes it attractive to the public eye for sure. And yeah. I think I don't. I think boats too difficult because, for example, you couldn't run a big boat contest in Dublin because there's yeah. nowhere to do it. Like yeah. it, it always ends up being in the middle of nowhere. Whereas you need this city centre, big crowd big obstacle, like hardcore, gnarly thing. Yeah. People just want to see, there's actually a fact there, I can't remember, I read it years ago. It's like 70% or something of people who go to Red Bull X Fighters, the motocross thing, yeah. want them to fall. They're looking for a crash, that's where they go. <laughs> Best luck fighter that Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you probably want to find that one, but, but yeah, no, but it's crazy. Wait, what I show you to take from the Munich match point of view, it's the inclusion with other similar type sports that makes it successful. Like so, it's not like maybe that's what weightboarding has to do, piggyback off the and popularity of other extreme sports. Yeah. And this was the excuse, I don't know if it's true, but the excuse that wakeboarding got kicked out of X Games was that it was too hard to fit in. I suspect it's probably too at views and, and yeah, all this yeah, stuff. Of course. However, what they said was location wise, because X Games is always in the city, like in where I don't even know where they've been, but putting wakeboarding in those cities is nearly impossible. Yeah. But with System 2, you can't. That went, that was prior to System 2? Yeah, 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 I think the last X Games was like 2008 or 2009. Okay, yeah, was yeah, which was just, just around the same kind of times they were developing, I suppose, wasn't it? Exactly. Whereas now they could have it in it. Like Munich Mash was like four feet deep, like yeah. super shallow. I saw them walking yeah. out of it, it looks sketchy. Yeah, yeah, it's super sketchy. Yeah. But that's it needs that element to it. Well, then I suppose when you're talking about X Games, and the, I think the, the, the real wake, like yeah. the, those parts like, I think they were they're, yeah. they're, they're awesome in terms then, of at least bringing it to, a, to within like as Tim says within the inclusion of a, a wider absolutely. action sport and that, and that gets publicity and that yeah. gets everything absolutely 100% it's an interesting one I don't know and then I think the other thing that wakeboarding in the US really struggles with and this is something that you're so good at is the grassroots like in the US yeah. they just they do these uh, uh, gravel tour stops on the boat but like I know guys who can do like sevens and nines who are competing against. They have different levels, but like it's not focused on grassroots. We literally, like, yeah. for those people who don't know, in Ireland, like Owen has like run it. Like now, industry's not involved anymore. It's just a well, it, the, the industry, well, it, they got it started, but then because there's so many system two parts, nightmare to run a joint yeah. system. But, but, but they, they have done, England, done southern, southern cable series and yeah. stuff. Done in Ireland sure. and England, in general, like the grassroots is the focus and that's why you have kids and that's why you have people coming up because if you just work and work and work on making the top level better and better and better you're not going to have anyone else filter through the system yeah. so I think that's quite important and um, which is another one I want to ask you about because I think you have done the world's first ever male versus female competition like you didn't make <laughs> for those of you who don't know just to explain really quickly what happened was they did the Bally House Open this year, which was everything from grassroots to pros. Nick Davies came over, like it was a big event. But we had basically beginner, intermediate, and pro as such. Was that big? It was, there was an open and pro, so we had pro head to head, kind of like a lot of the stuff was going. But open was men versus women, like so you just threw. Everyone well, in look, together. there was a couple. Of, there was a couple of good female riders um, that had been progressing quite a lot, and then. Not, not taken away from any other female writers that it was it was kind of a little bit one-sided I suppose yeah. so it was kind of we were sitting around and going that was we wanted to design our own comp and we wanted to go like what well, not not that we we're looking to do something different we were just saying what would work best on the system two and I like, maybe it was kind of a bugbear of mine that like system two events weren't really designed for system two at times like some of the bigger like yeah. Munich Mash fees those kind of ones do quite a good job at it but they're trying to the, the IWWF from a national point of view are really trying to shoehorn in a full size 
uh, competition style into yeah. a system too, it's like doing soft corners. Yeah, it's just crap. Crap. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's, like, yeah. like, but at the same time, you can see what the IWF is doing. Like, if they're, if they're trying to get into into the Olympics, you need a set standard, a set scoring rule. You need yeah. to make it as it can't like be as subjective. Even yeah, as correct, correct. Driver. correct. That's yeah. I think what I heard. They don't like that there's a driver. Yeah. Oh, I'd like say a yeah, system well, or both. There's yeah. like someone because the driver can mess up. Well, it's also your be. It's the only thing that involves any kind of mechanics. You know, snowboarding is gravity, yeah, like, you know, yeah, so there's yeah. actually something pulling you, so it's a machine yeah. that's involved in the sport. I don't, as far as I know, I don't think there's any other yeah. Olympic sport that, yeah. that has yeah. something along yeah. those lines, you know. Uh, which, again, that makes sense, like, yeah. um, but from our, our point of view, that one, yeah, so it was driven, just a case of we wanted to, like, what do we want to do? We sat down as a kind of group of, dri- or group of drivers and we were like, as you say, we wanted to get, like, eyeballs on the sport. Yeah. The grassroots was brilliant for the competitors. But it was a bit long and a bit, a bit the same in terms of the spectators watching it, like you know, yeah. and like you go out and like I mean, you know, technically you you probably shouldn't have been in those grassroots tours at that yeah. top level. Yeah. Uh, that's why I always kind of wanted to push a pro one, like you're saying with the gravel tour. Like there was yeah. no point in you being in it, but it was great to have you. At the same time, people did want to compete yeah. and say they competed against you, which was like perfect for the time. So when this came around and the, the grassroots, the grassroots went off. Yeah, it was. It was just. It, we wanted to. We wanted to make sure that, it, like, number one is always that the the, um, the the competitors are really enjoying it, like that they enjoy their time. Because if it's going to progress the sport, you need to have an element of competition. You need yeah. to make sure that people want to compete and they have a good time competing and push themselves. And we do find that. Um, but then the other one is the spectators. Like, we want to make sure it's really good. So. Um, we were mixing up, not just we weren't doing just mixed ones, but we were mixing up the format. We went from like three runs to, with with unlimited falls to two runs yeah. and and go back out again uh, to get people more time on the water. And then that mixed group, I don't know, it, it was it didn't seem like a big decision, you know. You like know it, it was like in a nearly a controversial time because you know now that IWF IWF do equal prize money. I saw, and there yeah. was so much scandal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go too into it. But even with the pro tour stops I did, it was we had a huge problem. Basically, they kept changing the money in the pro tour stops this year. So like the first stop, it didn't affect first place ever, but in this like second and third, went from getting whatever like their money like halved yeah. because basically one of the girls kicked off. You show that name unnamed, <laughs> probably watching this, it off. and basically <laughs> kicked off, and then she actually shot herself in the foot. But I think because she got the couldn't get the right amount of money or something. Yeah, because it was to do them and who sh- how many people showed up, and it was just oh, yeah. it was a messy, messy situation and very poorly handled by yeah. the IWF, in my opinion. And um, but, but a hard one in, in there. Hard one, but they should. I just it's think it's they should have made the decision at the end of the year. They changed it yeah, so like we maybe. rocked up to a contest the second the week before the prize money is this. It says it on the ad. This is prize money, but then they change it when crazy. But anyway, like you do have to try it, I guess. Did, but didn't sorry. didn't bother me, but. The, the thing that was interesting about it was, I don't know, because I think I'm really bad, but I reckon, like, I don't want, when you're competing, when you're men, like, there's, let's say a competition, there's 20 men and 10 women, so it's so much harder to get to first spot in men, so then naturally, I think, you beat more people, you should have to, you should earn more money. So putting them together, then they're beating the same amount of people, yeah. and there was prize money in, in yeah, that yeah, division. Yeah, yeah, well, we did a small for the open, and mostly for the pro, but, but, I, but that made it, as I, as I said, it wasn't a big decision, it was just yeah. a natural decision we made, but I was like, well, why not? Like, what, what, what's the reason that they're not put together, yeah. you know? Like, I mean, there was a couple of girls in there, there was like, uh, Nicole Carroll got on the podium, she, like, she came third, 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 like, yeah. you know, out, out of 15 competitors or something? Yeah. Um, like, uh, it wasn't a big deal, but I think that's surely a natural way. I know no other sport does it, so it, it, it's, not an actually, yeah. it's not as if male and females compete together in snowboarding, yeah. but like, in this instant, in this season, and that was what that competition was about. It was like looking at what we need now, and I thought that was just the appropriate we thought. And would do you it. think it'll grow? Like, let's pick Nicole for example. Do you think now coming third to the yeah, to the met second second, second, second. second. John going third. Okay, so do you think coming second? Who came? Who who won? Do you yeah. know? Dave Dooley. Yeah. Dave Dooley. Oh yeah, of course. So do you think now? And I wonder what her mindset was. Do so you think she came away from going, I can't believe I just came second with all the men? Or do you think she said, like, I want to come first next time? Yeah, that's, that's like, individual, it's, 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 it's individual, like, you know. I, but mean, I, but, I would but like I, to think that that's maybe would, a pro of doing, the whole, doing men and women together is there's no cap of what's yeah. the best. Well, absolutely. And I think, I think 
like men have a lot to learn about in this sport now we say I think men have a lot to learn about how women approach it and women have a lot to learn about how men approach it and it just tends to be maybe male female nature where men what do you go mean by approach by approach so like the, I think the reason that Nicole got there and like fully deserved was she had a really solid run yeah. where like she just did what she could do she like kept it super clean and that's what competitive wakeboarding is about and people yeah. don't quite get it in these early stages they're going to want to press the crowd want to go balls out yeah. go big out and they're messy and they think they've done really well because they did they did a big One. invert yeah. and they like a big hand drag or whatever Nicole was stuck to what she knew. She did it. She did it two runs in a row perfectly. Yeah. I think she 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 upped it a little bit just by you know three sixty five forty or something yeah. slightly small on the next one, but like stuck to what she knew. And then I think a lot of the guy that was quite. I I don't think anybody you know was expecting that podium. Um, no, no, no. Do you know what I mean? So it was it was a good learning lesson. I would have thought from the men to look at her and go like, why did she? Go, why yeah, did you push that extra smooth, little bit? Yeah, like yeah. she was so smooth, you know what I mean? Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, but then, as I said, like if she if she really had to come back the next time, she would have to up her game, though. Like yeah. you know what I mean? So it's that finding that balance. Yeah. Um, and that's the, that's I what I think of learning from each other. Like, progression you know. for the sport and this is a yeah. sport of like just putting them against each other because I think often what's happening there's a few there's like a handful of really good female weight players, yeah. but as a whole. I can speak on the boat side of things, I actually don't know on the cable side of things. But I can well, tell you, well, you it's you, on the internet. Got Julia Rick and Anna Nixon exactly. and these kind of people that and are that's what like the same There's four or five women yeah. in the boat on the boat on the cable who are particularly ahead. But then if you actually look, if you go and look at like a pro tour final on the boat this year, well then sorry, they don't even have them anymore. But let's just say World Cup versus no and this is on the internet and I actually did this research myself recently. Versus 2007, I'm not even joking, the run in 2007, or maybe 2009, oh, you did, you did. Yeah, I saw you the run in 2009 yeah, yeah, yeah. was better. Like, and do you know what I mean? And that's because, and I think the problem there is because other than those few girls like Megan Ethel and whoever else, they kind of like, it's get to the level where you have one mode, and then you've got that one mode, that's enough. Like, yeah. that's, I just get that consistent, get a five, and then that's enough. That'll well, but that, well, that's a weird one, because like, if you did, you know, if there's equal prize money, like, like, I'm all for like I, women need to be in this so sport. Like, do you know what I mean? Like we need to, yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. But like, how how many have landed doubles? Like, you know what one. I mean? And one was that there was a French girl yeah. or an oh, Argentinian yeah, girl. Yeah, Argentinian girl. Yeah, 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 really yeah. super clean. Like Carol's done one off the, the kicker. kicker yeah. um, someone else did one off the kicker as well. I think earlier or something. But anyway, uh, I'm the old, yeah, old yeah. school one. I only yeah, kind of came across recently. Yeah. Um, like as old school, I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's got two kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she did it post two kids. Yeah, yeah but like that's insane. nuts, like you know. But yeah. like when it's like absolutely second nature, like why aren't more doing? I don't understand. They're it's just there's a limit, of, like, limitation on it, but it's a subconscious limitation. Yeah. I've said that often when I'm teaching. Like I have worked with Sana Mary, who's one of the best boat and cable riders. She's come on a lot this season. Actually, so much. Really she's, she's won everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the, on the cable. Definitely always on the podium and stuff. Always. Like, but I, I remember coaching her. I was like, you need to stop looking at the other girls like that's that's going to limit you that's going to slow you down because she was learning at this insane pace and not learning like i'm not talking about learning an invo i'm talking about learning like late roll to blind on the bow and like crow mobs and big tricks i was like you need to stop looking at them you need to try and be the best wayboarder in holland like yeah, yeah. regardless of boys yeah, yeah. obviously they have like Matt and Helfer and mark croon they've loads of good riders but you need to try and be up there with the men like you can't stop yourself because that's it's just gonna. But maybe maybe that's it. Maybe maybe we start like stop like I, like, I think she actually. It, sorry, funny enough, I think Santa Mary this year or last year came second in a men's competition. Oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Like I mean, maybe that is the case. If there's a stigma over it, like well, just compete together and like they're, 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 that's done. Yeah. <laughs> Job done. It's like well, win if you win and yeah. don't agree. Don't exactly. you know what I mean? Like, so. learn from. I hate people who say they learn from losing, but you do kind yeah, of yeah, to yeah. a certain extent. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I find it an interesting one. I, yeah. I wanted to call you up on that. Because it, it was good. It was good to do. Well, I see Liquid Leisure. We were, always, we were only saying that Liquid Leisure now we're doing for next year. Doing an over 35s mixed. Yeah. And the juniors are mixed. Tough. And I, I feel like, out of all that, that struck me as odd because, like, over 35s could be a tough one. Like, because there'd be some good masters men in there. I'm not saying there would be good masters female, but, but like the challenge there, like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like be proper old school, well, like, hard charging. Like, it's not that old. Like, yeah. 
Like I'm pretty sure. Well, it's all in this sport, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, good point. It's all dating. I've seen Sean Murray. He's like well into his forties. I'm saying he's pushing late forties. and He's still like insane. And then on the cable side, like they're still like 31's not that old. I'm just thinking like guys like Johnny Green and Ben Hitch. Yeah, like they're all in their mid thirties, and they were still in that industry. Pro Tour, Johnny Green was last year, didn't he? Yeah, and he won something as well. Talk to me, just like about some of the the like your influencer, are you an influencer? No, I hate that yeah, word. Yeah, I know, but, yeah. but you are though, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> then, then you the get, Irish media companies are watching, yes. yeah. <laughs> you got content with four star pizza on the way home from Turkey. <laughs> 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 you're <Yeah>. like Domino's. <laughs> you're like Domino's, I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, like what, you know, from, from a business point of view, I obviously see the value in it. And like we've been talking about organizations not seeing the value in it. Um, to push a business, like who who inspired you from an influence, influencer point of view, and, like, and it does, it, that's across the board because yeah. obviously, like from a small business, th there's a lot of talk about like getting influencers on your side in terms of how do you approach them or how do you approach them, yeah. and there's there's guides out there like this is how you approach an influencer and this is how is you actually yeah, yeah 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 there is like there is the, the, this is like on a lot of the the social media conferences and stuff going around there there's the specific talks on really. This is how you, you get your in, but I I'm, I'm not as as you say it needs to be natural and convincing and that kind of stuff. So the, the idea of me with limited budget, very limited marketing budget after you put in all your thing to go to an influencer and try and go like oh I want you to promote my business yeah. and, and it'd be like in, in my sense it might be easy enough because like I'm really it's, it's actually a super fun and, and, and content Instagram it's really, good yeah. content for them I guess which is content creation yeah. is always hard but. Talk to me, like who's, who's It's an interesting one because I see everything from like I follow some. It's primarily girls, and I'm not saying that, but like what I'm saying is, <laughs> there's a lot of the biggest influences in Ireland will all be females. But yeah. if you go on their Instagram, like, that's all they do is post paid ads. Like they don't yeah. actually do anything. Well, it's. Like, a, I know we haven't started till we lost count. But so from when I got into it, I actually had zero intention of doing this. Like I literally was just. I remember I was in Orlando, I think for my 21st birthday, my parents bought me a camera. Like that's what I got, because I wanted clips. Or I remember I bought a GoPro and I was like, this sucks, this GoPro's terrible. Like you can't see anything from the boat, yeah, it's yeah, too wide yeah. angle. So I remember saying that and then they got me, for my, they bought me like this camera package. So I had it for like four or five months and then I, my birthday's in December, in April I was like, screw it, I'm going to film just a tutorial. Like, and it was so bad, I filmed the tutorial and then wakeboarding me on the camera and then I went back to my webcam on my laptop and filmed the talking. And I put it out there, and then I literally had no intention. Like zero, I was hated computers, hated everything to do with it. But I was like, oh, I'm bored. Like, because you have so much free time is when you're just wakeboarding. Like, I've seen that in parts So much stuff, free time. Like, yeah, like you yeah. have, if you literally, I'd wakeboard at like 8 a.m., be finished by nine, and then you're just waiting around till like four. So like, what do you do? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, now the guys are going to the gym, but I bet they still have so much free time. Yeah. So I did this first video, and I got such a response. And I was like, crap, I'm gonna like do the Lord. I just kept such a response in terms of comments and that comments kind of stuff. Exactly. Like, yeah. And I say such a response at the time, I think it got like 50 views, yeah. maybe like four comments, if even. And yeah. that, but that was enough, like one was enough to make yeah. me do a second. But that's so I got into it from that point of view. And then slowly, within a year or two, I realized I think the biggest time was when I came second in that reader's spot. I was like, crap, this is actually like I've been influenced. Which came first so, this year. First okay. this year, yeah. So then I realized, like, crap, this is good. And then the whole thing with the board happened when the public decided for me to like, they, they literally pushed around, and forced them to give me a brother all, and it sold quite well. So then I was like, well, like, this actually works. Like, and, and influencing really, really works. Like, and it's probably an under, like, appreciated way of marketing. Well, I, like, I, I would assume, and I'm like, I, as from an inf influencer point of view, if you wanted to become an influencer, you can't. You, well, like, you, if, like, well, you, you no, could create a personal brand, I guess. Do it. But I've worked with like a bunch of big brands in Ireland that people probably don't even see on my YouTube. And, yeah. But I did stuff, and recently I did one with a bank, and someone told me it's really nice to actually work with someone who does something. Like everyone else who they were doing the ads with, like, are just influencers, but they don't actually do anything. Yeah, they yeah. just influence. They have no sport, no business, no job. Their job and business is that. 
And that's, that's what, weird. And that's I think a that's weird way to think about it. Don't step on no, 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 no. It's like, shameful to just be an influencer. Well, like there's, there, there are influencers out there that hate the word influencer and will say it. I'm yeah. not an influencer. Like, but then what way. are they? Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. I think it was the it was the white loose boys. You know, I watched oh, the cafe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say they're not, but they but they clearly influence. They have they have Yeah, and you have to capitalize it when you have it. Yeah, well, they do it better than anyone. It's silly not to. I actually don't follow them, but it's silly not to. But at the same time, yeah, it's cool and it's res- like respectable, I think. But they have a business and they have yeah. there's a reason for it. Well, uh, yeah, that is, that is, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the average monthly salary for an influencer in Ireland is about two and a half thousand. Two and a half thousand, okay. Yeah, yeah. So there'll be a lot. Points are a new song. I'm not. I, I don't get paid much by this. Though. I'm honestly charging too little. Yeah. Um, I mean, no, I actually charge ten thousand euros. <laughs> actually, if you're lucky. No, but seriously. Um, yeah, and I'd say there's some guys, I know a few of them who were talking like in the in a couple hundred grand and they don't, they, they don't do anything, nothing, literally, That's I nice. know them personally, yeah. no. Well, like who saw, okay, like, okay, well there's a whole influencer debate, but like what about, would you, what would you do, like who, who did you look up to at the start, who did you look up to now, and like what, like, again, I, I guess I'm coming, we said this at the start, I, I, I'll always steer towards business, like, you know, but who do you think, Businesses benefit off, you know what I mean? From, from that yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, Real okay, people, for sure. Uh, give, me, give me some examples. So examples like people I would follow, and um, I follow various different people for various different reasons. So I follow random stuff as well. Well, I think but, like, that's it. Would be I bet people would be interested to know who you follow. Okay, so like, one of the one of the guys, and to be honest, like not the biggest fan of him personally, but so much respect for him is the biggest influence in Ireland. Guy called Rob Lipset. I'm sure you've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. Just he's so business minded about the whole thing and he's like a respect what he's done, yeah. he's changing and he more or less created the influencer like kind of concept in Ireland. Because he okay, he's into the gym, he's into fitness, but like he's more or less just an influencer who now has built gyms, companies, off the back box, of what he's done. Like, back. Which is good that's good to see when you say like, oh, they like that bank liking to work with people who do something, you could yeah. do the reverse, start that way, but at least Exactly. Like. So he's one end of the spectrum, and he would be one of the first people I watch. And just because, to be completely honest, my social circle like would nearly mix with his a little bit, and yeah. so I just heard he was doing it from friends or whatever. Then you go on the completely opposite scale. Jon Olsen is another guy who's probably the he's the influencer's influencer. Yeah. He actually is. He's that guy. bigger than Casey Neistat. I was I was only watching his stag party videos there the other day. He's yeah. getting private jets around the place. It's and going, it's but nuts. he's got businesses. He built. When he began, he's only actually started one business since he's become one of the biggest influencers. He's been doing it four or five years now, but or maybe three years. But he was a pro snowboarder, or skier, sorry. I think two times X Games gold medalist, world champion, did all that, and then I think he hurt his back, so he started vlogging. Yeah. And then he went on, but he had this bag company, and then the bag company blew up because of like it's douchebags, I don't know if you've heard of it. Well, I think I can. Really yeah, yeah. like, oh, that's, that's his. That's his, that's he owns it, literally. I think it's him, he owns 50% or something and another guy. Yeah, yeah. And then you now he has like a merch company and all that or whatever. But he is like, because he's so technologically really good, like he's camera advice, he does camera reviews, he talks about editing, he talks about everything, he, he'll teach you new skills. You make any stuff like this isn't bright enough, so I'm gonna try and brighten it. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like you learn that type of stuff from guys too like him too, right? But see, sorry, here I'm going way off topic, but um. Well, like that, that's that's they all kind of segue into the same things and that kind of stuff, and like I mean, surely a technical review for you isn't too far down the line, is it? Or a I, I wouldn't. Go, I know nothing. Like I shouldn't have let that go, and like the audio is pretty terrible on this. Cause I'm thinking the acoustics isn't good in here, but like. For me, that's not my thing. Like my niche is way more content, and I put that out. But then for him, his niche is okay. He's got like sick cars, sick like he goes in private jets, all that stuff. But it's also like every influencer I know follows him and like looks up to him. He's he's the guy. Then I'm trying to think of any other ones. Like I have some people who I just follow because I'm personally interested. In. Like you end up kind of invested in people. I don't yeah. know if you've noticed that. If you follow, yeah, them. totally. Do you follow right. um, well, Casey Neistat was the one that that I like. I, I think maybe even you told me about it. But I, I was never. I've only recently started using YouTube as. Uh, Go to, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm almost using it as my search engine these days. Like you know, I, start, I don't really go to Google anymore. I go to YouTube, yeah. and it gives me my reviews and my top tens yeah. and like anything if you're doing research or anything like 100%. that. And obviously your how to's that that yeah. staple of it. But uh, so yeah, kind of like again coming across those guys, like Irish wise. There's not a lot though. There's, there's so much space in the world. 
there is, yeah. And like as, as you say, I think the female market is very much geared towards fashion, fitness, food, and like Beauty and all that. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, and they seem to be doing well. And like obviously, I, there's only so much interest that, that, that I have in it. There's only so Please. much engagement that I will that they will. You know, I'm not yeah. going to be getting invested in them, like you say. Like exactly. You know I mean? No, exactly, exactly. And when you go to as well, the other one that people always ask, and I find it's interesting, is people ask, what's the biggest seller? Is it like Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube? For me, and for anyone I know, like, and all the biggest people, it's YouTube. Like, because YouTube, you sit down, if you're still listening, you're like probably an hour into this nearly or whatever. Are you making, are you making money from it? From this, depends on how many ads come up. Comment how many ads, because I actually have no idea. <laughs> yeah. But no, not, and I found this very fascinating, because there's a new project I'm working on. So like, my CPM rate, which is the ad that comes up, the click through and everything on that is, I thought was decent, but then when I actually found out how much, like let's say the automated, automotive industry makes, because yeah. we're about to steer into that, it is insane. So like they're literally making four times per view what I make, which is, and the reason being is because, when I watched recently a review on a Mercedes A45 AMG, and no joke, the ad at the beginning of the video was a Mercedes A45 AMG, because they can target it so much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually just yesterday, someone commented on my Instagram, yeah. saying that they got an ad from my wakeboard, on my video, but that's so rare. So whoever, yeah. whatever shop advertised that, because it wasn't a brand, they said it was a shop, they paid good money for that. Yeah, yeah. And so I will make money off that. Because if someone clicks through and purchases. However, most of the ads that come up on me are just random, because it's yeah. so niche, it's too niche. They don't know, they don't know how to target it, and it's yeah. whatever left over, that's interesting. So what you make off the ads is so minimal, yeah. where you make money is selling products, selling yeah. whatever it is, and that's, yeah. And so it's YouTube all the way for you. 100%, because people who sit down and really watch, I have a real following on YouTube, whereas Instagram's just like, oh, you see a cool photo, or, oh, you see a cool video, you might like it, you might follow but not really care, yeah. whatever like that, and people do stories. Well, it's interesting, but again, if we go back to a business point of view, like YouTube is good for us from a brand promotion, and we do obviously how to with you guys, with, 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 with you in like a couple of series in, in the past, and that's yeah. that you're your evergreen content, isn't it? That's always tipping over in the background, Completely and that's right. great. So it keeps your brand alive, I guess, and and topical. Um, but it's not. I don't. I wouldn't exactly say we got a whole lot of sales, no. but like we, we we're not maybe leveraging it. Either. But first of all, it's way harder as a brand. I literally yeah. feel bad for you for that. Yeah. But you guys do a great job of like even maybe Snapchat's dying a bit now. But yeah, I remember we away from it a little bit. We did it for. We, we had a good season of it. I then, remember, but yeah. that's Snapchat because Snapchat just, as a whole thing yeah. is less people. But if we look at um, the... Sorry, I just that. Yes, that one's still going. Anyway, mm. sorry about that. Sorry. If we look at Instagram stories that's taken over Snapchat, and I've seen you guys literally post a lovely picture in the middle of summer, not, when, when it's not like today, and you're like, unbelievable conditions, still two slots left at yeah. five o'clock. And does that work? Totally, like that actually, that very last minute kind of stuff keeps people in connection, that works. Probably work better, on, did it work better on Snapchat? Like Instagram's growing for us now, slowly but surely. Yeah. But we, like, it's hard to get interaction on our as a because I think so it's a brand. Hard. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so y y it is a little bit tougher. But look, we we have the content though at the same time. Like, you know, we're all we're doing, like yeah. it, that's easy to go easy. take a photo yeah. and people kind of like to see it. We have to put effort in, man. and you do. You have like you yeah, have, yeah, like nearly part time or full time videographers and stuff. Yeah, we definitely have kind of like our own kind of media crew that. I'm in contact with most days and that kind yeah. of stuff between graphic design and media and that kind of stuff. And like most of our marketing, if not all of our marketing, is now goes into media production, we'd say, in a grand scale, but that could be photos, videos, that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, and I think that suited our brand, suited our industry yeah. well. Um, but it, it's tough, like again, it's, 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 it's trying to give your brand a personality, which kind of, that, that, that's hard. And it's, it? it's, I think it's the huge movement that's about to happen in, and it's already happening, it's speaking to like O'Brien, I know, and I'm probably, don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but they're gonna try and put faces to the brand yeah. more, because at the moment, to the average person, it's the writers, but then it's just a load of corporate people. Yeah. They're like, actually, the marketing manager of O'Brien is Sean O'Brien, not at all related to it, but he's like, a ex pro eight border still the pro eight border still SOB. Yeah. he's a sick guy like really cool why is he not the face of that like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's waiting it's the same here like it's, you're it's, such a nice person i've seen you do the live videos yeah. and stuff on facebook but it, it, that face that kind of is it, i think it helps grow like, yeah it has to be it but it's yeah it's 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 hard to find the time almost it is yeah. so time consuming and that's why i admire you so much and what you've done to build a brand and i think 
It's it's easy because that's my job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I've nearly made it, even though I just said I'm a wakeboarder and who does this. I still realize that I can put that time in because like my main thing is put out two videos a week. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what it's become. But for you, you also have this business with how many employees? Eighty plus now or something. So you've got eighty people to worry about. You've got structure. Everything. Yeah, but when it becomes such a core value, like you need to prior, you need to make time for it, like and make yeah. sure that you are doing it as well, like you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. Look, sure, we like give me your highlights of last year. Before we went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or this last year, because it's it's getting to that time. It's Christmas. It's New Year's. I'm just checking what else. What else? Uh, yeah, for me, I don't know. I just have a good time living. But what, like that's a terrible. It's actor. true though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for, I'm looking for specifics. Okay, You've got okay, voted number one, one fan I'm favorite. Gonna, I won't work Okay, so that's obviously a highlight. <laughs> Pro model. Pro um, model. Like yeah. what a huge year. Yeah, no, it was a really good year. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know. I just. I it sounds so stupid, like people, and this is going to get me to my next question to you, yeah. uh, which is, it's like, for me, my favorite thing is just like the idea of a sick lifestyle. Like at the moment, it's very quiet. Like if you ask my housemates, they probably think, man, this he does, does nothing. nothing. <laughs> I, I get up at like half nine, ten every day. Come like down here and do some work if you want. It's yeah, no, you know, like, but then most of the year it's so hectic, but it's uh, so good hectic. Like travel. This year I did, I think, eighty something flights, and that's probably too much, but it's like so go go go. And I really like that. And it's, kind of keeps me out of like let's say a job I'd hate but that's what I was going to ask you is like what what's the kind of goal with let's say Barry House because it's growing fast like you've got the second location mm. now you're talking about doing introducing new activities like what's the kind of goal with it um like like our ultimate goal we always say with the our we just want to be the best at what we do like I mean I, I think that's quite important that you take ownership over it and you can always check back to it like in terms yeah. of all right, like what? What's the ultimate goal? And it has to be, it has to be um, simple, and it has to be direct, and people have to understand it. And I think yeah. just being the best within our industry, or the, the best, of, like yeah, the best within our industry at what we do. Are you one of the biggest in Ireland so far? Um, like yeah, as a private centre, but like I mean, we're probably the new guys on the block. We don't. We, we kind of do our own thing. We do it super quickly. That like people kind of go, what are they at? You know yeah. what I mean? We just, if we see something that we think will, it will apply to us, we go after it. And that's kind of what we've done with the second site. So now we have two sites. Um, a lot of the goals are kind of big thing that we put up on the board was this efficiency this year, because we do have two sites that happened so quickly last year that we just have to tighten the ship a little bit. Yeah. And um, not, we've gotten very big, very quickly. So you gotta just make sure that like, you know, you gotta build it, but then you have to fill it. Yeah. And then you gotta, then you can build more. Like there's no point building, building, building until, so that goes off. So goals wise, it's just be as good as we possibly can be. Um, like we're spending a lot of time this winter with three or four guys here all winter, like just working on our staff training. Our staff are kind of core of what we do, and we need to get back to them a little bit and make sure they have good, no. good, good, good progression areas and good places to go to. So we're trying to do that. Um, Wakeboarding wise, um, like we're kind of plateaued a little bit in terms of actual just capacity and like I mean from the sets we delivered last year to the sets we delivered this year we're within like 200 sets no, or something. Like that. You know? insane numbers, right? yeah so it's good number it's good high number like you know and I uh, bear in mind like that we're affordable to to ride here so, so affordable like the membership you pay and it's just but that that's our business model like we go for quantity as opposed to quality if I was running a, like a single cable in a high population area to do it, you have to fill it and keep it keep yeah. it keep it high value like you know and obviously I know you well and like you literally never switch off work really hard <laughs> but my question is why <laughs> I'm like, How come? Um, I don't know I, like you say it's a lifestyle for you it's a lifestyle for me like yeah. you know what I mean and I guess that's why I took to the wakeboarding so much that that became and I took to the community side of the business that made it so much easy to Your personal life as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, like it did, and it has turned. Like you know, I'm like I, you know, born and bred an hour and a half away from here, or where I went to school and stuff. So that's where my friends are and stuff. But like, I spend less and less time down there just because this is getting busier and busier. But it's not a, like it's just fun, you know. Yeah. And I always say, look, I'm happy getting up in the morning. Like I am, yeah. you know. That sounds cheesy, but yeah. like if you if you wake up in the morning, you know that Sunday night school fever, yeah. you get kind of getting like. Oh, to work or when I wake up and I'm like oh I'm just gonna work oh thank god yeah, Do you know it's, it's that relief yeah. like not a dredge you I'd know? say I'm gonna insert the cliff right now but this is the glory of owning the cable park in December in Ireland if you want to put in a cable park <laughs> that is breaking my heart <laughs> 
Jack, okay, last yeah, question. Is it easy to run away from? Um, like, no. Does it take nothing's it? easy. Like, I mean, like, nothing's easy to be a success. Like, yeah. you have to work hard at everything you do. Um, I wouldn't say it's easy, but I'd say it's fun. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I mean, do you get to ride a lot? Uh, as as more in the shoulder seasons, not so much. Like my, but like I, I do say, my ultimate dream is to have a membership in a park other than here. So, <laughs> yeah, so I can just like, you want like to yeah, 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 yeah. So I can rock over there, buy a membership, come down at half five, leave at six, and yeah. say good luck. Yeah. Because uh, like that's you do get to ride a lot, but it's never just your half an hour sets that yeah. your members get. You're down because you're bringing another driver down, so you're going to drive for them. They're going to drive for you. So that's minimal an hour. Yeah. You probably ride a bit more because you've spent that time. So yeah. it makes your day super long. Yeah. But like it, it's a, the business is a lifestyle, the same as the wakeboarding for you is your lifestyle. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. So. Um, Interesting. Just one last thing, Dave. You're eighteen point six million people off my lord, who's the highest uh, following on Instagram. Just, just eighteen point eighteen million. I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that more across stats is made up. Uh, I, 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 I went, I went to Rebel Expo when I was like sixteen, so that's it's a lot. I don't remember it really, but yeah. So okay. we'll we, we'll meet back here next year with 18, like million, a, 18 million more. <laughs> Come and bring on. No, but. Well, go ahead and we'll finish off like what, what's your what's 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 plans for next year? Few big changes. Quick, quickly. Uh, obviously, so there's gonna be one big change, and I can't even say it yet. But uh, other than that, I'm gonna be traveling, going to Australia, booking flights literally tonight. Finally, so by the time you're watching this, I'm actually going to Australia on the second of January. Uh, I'm gonna go there for a week, see some friends. Then I'm gonna come home. February, I'm gonna be in. Uh, Philippines, I think. I haven't booked it, but I'm gonna, go, yeah, I'm gonna go to JB O'Neill and stuff. And then if every March. Is sure, sorry, this is going to watch the GP. The, the which? The GP obstacle, have you seen it? The, the one where they're jumping. Oh, I have. I've seen Dave A.V.'s hit on it. Yeah, the Tantra Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, do, I, I don't know, it looks really good. Yeah. That's the last thing we're going to okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I've mentioned about rails, 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 it gets boring, boring, boring. Yeah. What do you reckon? Did you see Leo Sofer's new edit? Yes. With all the air tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. I just say, the cable he did, that 919, is that what it's called? It's, it's like, was it 319. That, that is awful. It's the beginner cable in Miami Wake Park. I don't know how he did it there. Did he shorten the lane? No, it looks no. pretty long. Even so. Well, Maybe it's a well, he, that, that's, well, like, this is a whole other topic that we, I don't, don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but like, cable, cable writers in terms of it's so hard for them to get recognition as well. Like you look at Leo Sober and he's like, he's, I find he's under the radar, but I've seen him write an anthem. I'm like, the dude he's is incredible. Yeah. The style is nuts. And he's so consistent at big ass tricks like that. Yeah. Like, you know he, what well, I mean? he's been around a long time now as well. Like he, I'd say he's pushing mid thirties. I don't know his age actually. I'm pretty good friends with him. I pretty know that. But yeah. No, he's really, he's been around a lot. Like in the Nick Davies era, I would call it. He yeah. was, Leo was like, but then there's a, there's a whole, like we are getting into a conversation, but the whole different, like cable style, like you know, True. there is. There is. Do you think now, like I, I think if I was like looking at some guy coming up, I would say like if you go out and you're sick on the rails, you're gonna go undervalued because like everyone's sick on the rails. Like those random French guys were so sick on the yeah, rails. Yeah, yeah. I think nearly if you go. And then they were blown away by you were just doing like you did sevens, maybe one nine off the kicker. And like, oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, and then the Breaders hit the kickers really well. Like yeah. They were insane, and that's how they, they literally paved away for themselves and having sick. But that's like a bold transition to a cable, is it their kicker? So okay, maybe. but then let's pick if you were to come up and cable right now, I, my actual advice would be to someone like hit air tricks hard because no one is oh, killing air tricks. No, I'm serious. serious. If you want to make a net, like if you want to actually. If you want to throw, you have to throw a little bit of your kind of ego aside yeah. to make it. You really do. You're going to have to sacrifice something, like whatever it is, because you go, if you just do the same as everyone else, it's very hard to break through. Yeah. Like, do you know how many guys are like sick? Like, really, really, there's hundreds of guys who are way better at cable than me. And the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we said, there's better guys well, than the, the But they don't, the they don't have like this thing that they've done that has kind of separated them. You need to have that, whatever whatever it might be. Well, it's interesting. Like, like it's just, it's so interesting because you look, maybe I actually had it on my list to talk about was the style. And you look at like the space mob style that they kind of do there. They're yeah. bringing in this such a kind of skatey kind of vibe to it and yeah. sketchy rails and that kind yeah. of stuff. And then you look at someone like Nick Davies or Leo who just like, like can do whatever they want, bust off the top of it, off the style. Easy, yeah, yeah. And the, but then I think you have quite a unique style on cable because and like I you know what it looks like to be honest. Well, like it look like, and I was trying to like, especially watching in hypnotics now and stuff. I was trying to like pick it out, and that was where our original conversation was going. But I th I think you have quite a unique style, and, and I think Elaine was down there watching, and she said something like, 
effortless or natural and I think like you're like you bring that kind of very on um, on axis spin that is so natural to you to the rails like you know which is so someone would immediately go oh he's got no style yeah, well, yeah, 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 Better it's easy, kickers, it's you know? easy, easy. Yeah. But you're bringing that style to the, I think that, that's one to watch because you're kind of bringing that style yeah. to the transfers, to the rails, and it's so on point and so exact that a lot of those other guys don't take, have. I'll take the compliment, but yeah, no, I don't know. Um, yeah, well, I guess yeah, it's an interesting I just think that even if we're talking like, yeah, you need to have your own style, and I actually think what I was saying earlier, there's room for everyone. There's room for the guys who push yeah. the boat, the cable, the whatever, wake surfing even. There, I think there's also room for someone. Someone is going to capitalize on that, and they'll do really well. On which? On, on air tricks. Someone's going to oh, do yeah. it. Someone should. But sure, like Nick Davies. Like why? Like I mean, he is doing it. Because he's doing it, but he's like, Nick probably hasn't learned a new air trick in a lot of years. Because Nick. Because he's maxed them out. Because he, he has, he has so much, and like you, was I don't want to say he can do them all. But Nick can do them all. Was that a on first air on the layer of the I three ones? I think I don't know my, my knowledge of cable. I bet. I bet. I think it was first. Post that video because I bet yeah. most people wouldn't have even seen it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'll oh, literally put a screen grab in there and every video. But Nick can basically do, and Lyra can do all the air tricks, but there's not that much pushing. Like, there's no reason why. But, it, but that's coming like out of the sport it. because th that, that's the whole point of it is the plastic playgrounds and it, and it was, it, it came. It's I, going out, but I think. I, th I think it was actually the Space Mob Instagram that I saw. They, they, they showed a, 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 an American cop from. Like ninety nine maybe, yeah. and it was just like, and it was funny, and I've heard it on you a podcast you did with like is it Dan on the Mano or whatever yeah, his name is yeah. that he they, they were like they were like oh this is such a great training tool for a boat and yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, and yeah. And yeah. I was that, like, that's the was like, that's the Orlando mindset like, yeah it was, like an it was so song. weird yeah. like I just yeah. it was so foreign to me but they were just doing they were all they were doing was the air tricks and busting it out like and doing and they were they, the park Spotify went on the short line and was busted out like, a short exactly. line comp and this kind of stuff. Even if they got rid of the short line and made a little bit short lines, there is no reason, like it's been done on system, I'm pretty sure, but like why can't people do like quad S bends and stuff? Finish off. And you're telling me right now, <laughs> if I post it in Wake Island Facebook page going, oh, or on my page or on Instagram or wherever going, oh my god, someone just did a quad S bend on a full cable, then you're not going to click that video. Yeah, totally. Like. And then you'll probably follow that person, and then that person will become interesting if they just keep doing. Put a new. poll up. Put a poll so, up. Are like, air tricks coming back? Air or tricks. Not, I, like. I actually will bet. I'll bet. I don't know. I want to make a big bet, but I'll bet something that the. Different two. Well, system like. two will probably kill it a little bit. That it's just, good, yeah, it's, it's, just it's, hard. it's just harder. Like. Or it's too easy or too hard. It's like yeah. it's one or the other. And too, in, too inconsistent. Air There's no consistency. Air tricks thing for a person that doesn't know what way for it. Yeah. They all want to come down and go, what, yeah, what yeah, was yeah, that yeah. Superman thing they did in yeah, the corner? Just jumped into it, yeah. yeah. But I think air tricks, there's definitely room. If you're watching this and you're pretty good and you're like 16, working your air tricks, you will live. So you're going to work on your air tricks next year? No, I'm not, because that's not my place. No, I said everyone has their place. I'm well, like you bring your stuff. I'm one of the like guys who hates air tricks, but like, I'm not. <laughs> a, I, don't, and I don't hate them, but I don't love this, them. Like, I, I never did. did not see this coming. But I swear on my life, there's someone should do it because it's it's what becomes super fascinating is when someone when you see this edit i was talking about those two argentinian boys yeah. wait till you see the way they land inside wrap it's like i can't remember what it's called like it's called like mushroom wrap or something like that wait till you see it with the handle around your body yeah they, they do every trick like that but then i was watching just passing that. not passing the handle yeah but it's like, hard yeah on the boat like that's insane was like, what, what did your man Tyler, who did the double back move? Was that yeah, what he did? That's inside that. That's, 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 not, that's hard, sorry, that's yeah. not too hard. That's really hard. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's a lot eas easier than what these guys okay. do. But then in my head, and they did the Dum Dum 5. Actually, that kid, Ulf, that he did the Dum Dum 5 and then the Dum Dum 7. That's the only reason anyone knows who he was. Before that Dum Dum 5, no one knew. Like, no one. He was under the radar. And then all of a sudden, he's at Wake Awards. Everyone knows him. Everyone's giving him high fives. Like, it's it's an interesting one. I think air tricks. Uh, sorry, I think like doing your one thing that separates you is gonna it's gonna get you talked about, and that's how you, that's how you affect me because it goes back to that's how people know about you. That's how you get eyeballs. That's how you make sales. That's how you get sponsored. That's how you become a pro wake warrior. It's a good. Will Will Max land his triple off the kicker? Yeah, process. I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think he could have he could have dragged ahead of it. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll happen. Anyway, I want to say thank you so much to Owen and Tim for our fact checking. Um, thank you so much for this. I didn't even know where this video is going. I was just down here for a ride, and we said we'd have have a little chat on the camera. Um, so thank you very much. Also, thank you for like 
literally saving wakeboarding in Ireland. I don't know if you know, but Irish Nationals, about 10 people showed up for the boat, but then we have like waiting lists for the cable. So yeah, thank well, you for all your I'm work there on behalf I'm of wakeboarding, wakeboarding in Ireland. And uh, yeah, that is literally it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know if you'd like to see more of this kind of content. And I, don't, I really don't know. Take, on, is, take on the golden mic pod. Or the <laughs> golden, golden mic Golden mic pod, that doesn't matter. Yeah, no, I, I consider doing my podcast. So I don't know, I figure I'd just try this one, see what people think. Get something more interesting the no, next day. <laughs> thank you for doing it, because I, I knew that Owen could talk and he was interested in stuff like that. So I figured it was good. But yeah, thank you so much, guys. See you soon.